Good morning, Slackers. Um, this is going to be video lesson 19. Let me write that down. I'm a little, little off my game right now. I'm just waking up. Let's see here. We have notes. And I'll explain the ridiculous pen in a second. Notes for video lesson 19. So here we are. The Saccharo Crib. It is Monday at about seven o'clock in the morning. So I feel a little more human right now because this is what time I would normally be teaching. Maybe not necessarily Calc Honors, but this is when I would start my day. Um, I've tried all different things over the course of, oh my God, 70 something days here, teaching at night, teaching during the day. And you guys have painfully gotten through it with me which I appreciate. But um, yeah, during the day, I mean, my husband tries to watch the kids and you guys have probably laughed and giggled a lot, but he, oh, I'll watch the kids and it's just like every five seconds somebody's talking to me. And then at night, I'm exhausted. I think one of the videos, I don't know if it was your class or another class, I started falling asleep while I was recording, which is just ridiculous. So now I'm trying this and hopefully I don't wake anybody up talking to myself. But I fully expect Olivia to be coming out during this class and Hi, mommy, what are you doing? <laughs> so, hence the ridiculous pen. So we say, ridiculous pen, ridiculous pen. I love ridiculousness though, as you guys know. Um, so my favorite flower um, is roses. I love roses and I love dahlias. If you don't know what a dahlia is, you have to Google it, D-A-H-L-I-A. -A. They're the most beautiful, beautiful flowers in the world. But I love roses, particularly yellow roses. But um, for Mother's Day, <laughs> Olivia had my husband order like a pack of 20 of these. So I have 5 million rose pens. They're adorable. She's adorable. So anyway, I promised her the next time I teach, I would use my ridiculous rose pen. So hopefully she wakes up and sees me using it. And I'm sure she's going to comment. So now you're filled in and you're up to speed. So anyway, how are we doing with differential equations? I've been back and forth all weekend about what I'm gonna do for you guys as far as this lesson. You know, I, I nobody communicated with me. I see a lot of you are being slackers. Um, I think a lot of you are behind the eight ball on assignments. So I'm gonna start getting on you guys about what you owe me because progress reports are coming out soon, I believe, um, like in a week or so. And um, I have to keep reminding you guys, June 12th, June 12th, June 12th, try to get all your work in for fourth quarter by June 12th. Um, but anyway, yeah, we're down to the wire here. We're talking four weeks, ladies and gentlemen. That's all we have left. Four weeks is like seven or eight assignments. That's it. That's what we're going to be doing. So I really need you to stay in the game with me and uh, try to get through this. But I've been, I can tell how many of you guys are doing work, number one, because I see you submit it. Number two, I see the views on the videos and we're like four views, six views. And I'm like, oh my God, these kids are not doing anything. Um, so slacker, 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 wake up, let's get started. But anyway, um, point is, I haven't heard from any of you. And I'm kind of like at this point, I feel like stabbing this pen in my eyeball with differential equations. So we're going to do an extension of it today. We're still going to kind of do it a little bit, but look at what it, how you visually represent the general solution of a differential equation. I started using that vocabulary in lesson 18. So now we're gonna actually use it, look at it, graph it, and see what's going on. So um, before we do that, though, I wanna wrap up on differentials. So I'm gonna kind of do a little bit of both here. I'm gonna go over the homework. I'm gonna pause and see what time it is. And if we have time, we'll do some more examples of differential equations. If not, we're gonna put it aside and I'm gonna start working on what we call slope fields. And then I'll save my extra examples of differential equations for like do now, so to say, um, for slope fields. Okay, so anyway, that's just me thinking out loud and keeping you guys up to speed, whether we were in school or not, you guys know it. I always try to tell you what we're doing for the week. So this week is going to be slope fields with a side of differential equations. It's not going away. If you don't like it, it's just a new way to look at it. Okay, so your homework was four, five, and seven on this handout. So I will be referring to this. Um, so let's go over the homework problems first. Okay, so it was this calculus maximus. I'm going to call it worksheet 7-3, right? 
right? God, I miss a desk. Let me tell you. Worksheet 7.3. All right, so number four. Number four is dy over dx. This pen is so adorable. I can't even. Um, and you have x over y, and then they give you an initial value of y of 1 equals 2. So I always write away, as you guys know, I write that as a point, 1 comma 2. And the first thing we have to do is separate our variables. So this is already set up as two fractions. Um, if you have a fraction equal to a whole number, you stick it over 1. But we're going to kung fu fighting. We have y, dy. Do you see me trying to be quiet right now? Do you know how hard that is for me? All right, and then we have x times dx because we cross multiply. Now, once we do that, I need to make sure my y dy's are on one side of the equal sign and my x dx's are on the other. So check yourself before you wreck yourself. Are they? We're good to go. So now how do I get rid of the derivative notation? The dy and the dx. What's the opposite of a derivative? It's an antiderivative. So you take the integral and then when we do that, we add one, put it over that number and add one it over that number. Now the question is, who gets the plus C and why? That's right, the plus C goes with the X because you show mad respect to the X in the bottom, to the letter in the bottom. All right, so now at this point, this is um, pretty much my general solution, okay? The general solution is what you get when you get the plus C. Now, if I wanted only the general solution, I would solve for y. So I would have to get rid of this 2 on the bottom and this squared, which wouldn't be that bad. What's the opposite divided by 2? Multiplying by 2. Remember, do it to both sides. What's the opposite of squaring something? Square rooting it. And then you would have your actual general solution, y equals, which is going to become really important for today. But this is pretty much my general solution. It's the family of answers. Because of that plus C, you have a lot of different answers, okay? And we're gonna look at that, what that visually means today in a slope field. But at this point, what I do is I plug in my initial value, one, two. So I have array CX, I write one, one squared's one. And I have array CY, I put a two, two squared's four. Four divided by two. Okay, so now we have two equals one half plus C. What's the opposite of adding a half? That's right, I'm gonna subtract a half on both sides. So now I have two minus a half is one and a half, or four halves minus one half is three halves. Okay, I don't care if you write 1.5, you can absolutely do that. All right, so now I have my C. So I go back to my general solution part, the last step before I plugged in my initial value. And I'm gonna rewrite it with my C and do what I said before, solve for y. So plus three halves. And then my last step would be, how do you get rid of the two on the bottom? It's the opposite of dividing by two. You multiply everybody by two. So that means all the twos are gonna cancel because two over two is just one, two over two is just one, two over two is just one. So now I'm left with this. And what's the opposite of squaring something? We're gonna square root it. So we have that mofo right there. And this, ladies and gentlemen, once you plug in C and solve for Y, is what we call a particular solution. Why? Because I actually found one of the answers in the family of answers by, that goes through a particular point. It has an initial value. Okay, so that's number four. So let's take a look now. We're going to have five. Number five, we had very similar dy over dx equals, except for there was a negative. Now, you got to put that negative with somebody. I decided to stick it up top. It doesn't really matter where you put it. It's not going to change your answer drastically. So I put the negative with the x, okay? And then we have an initial condition of y of four equals three. So it's the point four comma three. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is separate our variables. In this case, I'm going to get my, I'm gonna cross multiply because I have two fractions equal to each other. So I have y dy equals negative x dx. Okay, my next step is going to be, check yourself before you wreck yourself. 
are your y dy's on one side and your x dx is on the other? Yes, they are. So how do I get rid of the derivative notation? Well, what's the opposite of a derivative? Take an antiderivative. Then we're gonna add one, put it over that number. Don't forget to keep that negative. Add one, put it over that number. Who does the C go with? You show mad respect to the letter in the bottom. So that's my plus C. Now, at this point, this is my what, ladies and gentlemen? General solution because of the plus C. So it is the family of answers to this differential equation, which we're gonna graph today in a slope field. <clears throat> now I'm gonna take my initial value and I'm gonna plug it in. So every ACX I put a four. So this is, and I have to be careful here. <clears throat> four squared. Whoa. Yeah, no, that's not good. Wow, guys, I said that four squared. I plugged in the wrong numbers, I did three. Oh, I'm so cute, that answer is wrong. I'm looking at my answer key. Negative four squared is 16 and 16 divided by two is eight. And then over here, three squared is nine, so this is nine halves. I did it the other way. Oops, my bad. And look at me, I'm even admitting it on video. Okay, so opposite of adding eight is subtracting eight, but I need to make it over two. So common denominator, 16 divided by two is eight. So we see what I just did there. I just subtracted eight on both sides, which you guys can just do in the calculator. All right, so nine minus 16 is what? Seven, negative seven halves. Okay, now, once I have my C, I'm gonna go back to this step, the last step before I plugged in my initial value, my X, Y, and I'm gonna rewrite the equation And over ACC, I'm gonna put a seven halves, negative seven halves. Now the last step is here, solve for y to get your particular solution. Multiply by two on both sides, all the twos disappear. And then what's the opposite of squaring something? Square rooting it. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. That is what you would call your particular solution. Okay, so last one. It was number seven, wasn't it? Yes. So number seven, if you hear like a weird noise in the background, one of my dumb cats is eating right next to me. Okay, so dy dx, and he probably just listened to me and said, thanks a lot, bud. Two xy. And the initial condition, the initial value is y of zero equals three. So it's the point zero three. Okay, so let's rock and roll. This one's a little different because I did not um, stick it over one and cross multiply. Um, I mean, I just can't cross multiply right away. So I'm gonna stick it over one and then everybody go Kung Fu fighting. So I have one dy equals this Mamba Jamba now, are my y dy's and my x dx's on the same side of the equal sign? You know, opposite sides. But, you know, y dy on one side, x dx on the other. No, they're not. So I have to separate them. So I will move this y right there. What's the opposite of multiplying by y? Divide by y. Whenever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. Okay, now. How do I get rid of the derivative notation? That's right, I'm gonna take an antiderivative on both sides. Now, this is that weird one. If you recall, the derivative of ln x is one over x, little side note, which means the antiderivative of one over x is ln x, or the antiderivative of one over y is ln y. So this is ln y, and then over here, I would have 2x squared over 2. Who gets the plus C? That's right, the x, because you show mad respect to the x in the bottom. Now, I'm going to just clean this up a little bit here. I have ln y equals x squared plus C, because the 2 divided by 2 cancels. Holy cannolis. This is my 
general solution. Now I'm going to plug in my initial condition. So I've raised the x, I put a 0. 0 squared is just 0. And I've raised the y, I'm going to put 3. So I have ln 3. Now don't freak out. You can leave it as ln 3. Do not give me an irrational number. Just leave it as ln 3, which means c is just ln 3. How come I'm getting something different? Hold on one second. Because I suck at life and my answer key is wrong. Okay, we're good. We're just going to move on here. Zero squared, zero. Okay, so now, now that I know my C, I'm going to go back to my general solution. And I, everywhere... I see C, 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 C. I'm going to write ln3, okay? Now, this is the tricky part. I need to solve for Y here to get my particular solution. So how do you undo an ln? The imaginary base is E. So you raise everybody to the E to the X, okay? This whole thing. E and ln cancels, and I'm left with just the Y, and this weirdness, this is all an exponent now, is my answer. That is my particular solution. All right, so I've been trying to throw you some LNs and things like that here, there, and everywhere, sprinkling them in. Okay, all right, so there you go. I went over the homework. <clears throat> I am going to move on. Okay. I was going to do a couple more examples, but I don't want to kill you with differential equations. I really, really, really want to move on to slope fields. So hopefully you can download and print this packet because you're going to want to, to have these pictures. But in retrospect, if you can't print, you don't have a printer, you don't have paper, you don't have ink, whatever, your parents are using it for work, whatever the case is. I know it's a little tedious, but I would just copy it. So it looks like it goes up to positive two and negative two. So this is what I would do on line paper. And again, I know this is annoying, but if you don't have paper or printer, you can handle it. I'm literally gonna give you like one of these to work on for the assignment, okay? So it's not gonna be overwhelming, all right guys? So we went out to three. They have one, two, three. And you see how they're dots? And then one, two, three. You see how I'm doing this if I don't have a printer? And then I go up to two and down to two. And then I fill all the dots in in between. Okay, so it's just a way to get around sketching the coordinate for a slope field. You see how I'm filling this in with the dots? If I can't print at home, okay? So I don't want you to panic. If you're like, I don't have a printer, I can't do this, blah, blah, blah. Yes, you can. And that took me less than a minute, okay? And they're literally, if you flip through the examples we're gonna do, it's not gonna get ridiculous. You're not gonna have to do it up to like 10 or something. I know the notes look crazy. Look, they go up to three. Okay, so you're talking very, very basic, all right? Spending less than a minute doing one or two of those for an assignment or an example. Okay, so this is, we're gonna say notes. For video lesson 19. I'm gonna talk to you about homework in a second. Okay, so. I want to give you a chance to first read the do now to yourself, okay? Give it a right. Okay. It says we want to construct a slope field for this differential equation. It's a differential equation because differential just is a fancy word for a derivative. It's given to you as a derivative, negative x over y. 
first find the general solution to the given differential equation. General solution. We now know that's the thing with the plus C in it. I'm going to assign each of you a coordinate. That's what I would do normally if we were in class to save time doing this. Calculate the slope of the curve at your assigned point. Then come to the whiteboard and draw a small line segment with the desired slope at your particular point. Blah, 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 blah. This is great. This is how I teach it in class. We're not all together. So we're gonna, we're gonna drag through this. I'm gonna drag you through this kicking and screaming as much as I can. So first things first, find the general solution. We know how to do that. We don't like it, but we can do it, which means Solve for y, where the plus c is there, okay? They want the actual just general solution with the plus c in it. So first thing I'm gonna do is, everybody go kung fu fighting. So we have y do i equals negative x dx. Oh my God, this is exactly the problem we just did, right? Number five on the homework. Oh my God, guys, oh my God. What's the, um, how do you wanna do derivative notation? You take the antiderivative. So y squared over two equals negative x squared over two. Who gets the plus c? The x does. You show mad respect to the letter in the bottom. Now, at this point I was calling it the general solution, but I kept telling you guys that if I want only the general solution, I have to actually solve for y. So, what's the opposite of dividing by two? You multiply over eight by two. Whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So all these twos cancel. You never write 2c. Do not do that. Leave it alone. Okay, you don't mess with the c when you're doing algebra. So now I have y squared equals negative x squared plus c. What's the opposite of squaring something? We're gonna square root it. Now, I wasn't writing it before and I should have been more careful but it's plus or minus the square root of negative x squared plus a. It's not that I was wrong before, it's that in a particular solution, it doesn't really matter. When we're doing slope fields, it does, because I want to actually graph this family of solutions right now. So this is what we call my general solution. So I'm gonna write a little bit of notes here. These curves, So the curves satisfy x squared plus y squared equals r squared. They're circles centered at the origin. Most of you, 99.999% of the time, will never be able to see that until after I draw the slope field. And you're gonna be like, holy crap, they're circles. They are circles. This is the equation of a semicircle positive and negative. That's what the plus minus is, makes a semicircle. Okay? General solution. It is my general solution. Describes the family describes the family of all functions that satisfy the differential equation. Okay? Now, what does that mean? I've been saying it and saying it and saying it. The plus C is the family of answers. It's the family of all the answers that can possibly satisfy this differential. Why is there a family of answers? Because it depends on what point I'm talking about, which initial value I give you, okay? Depending on the initial value, what X and Y I plug in, I get a different C, okay? And you have a particular solution. So, the slope field graphs the family of functions that satisfy the differential equation.
All right, so let's talk about what we just said here. When I graph this slope field, it's gonna look like circles. That's this part. Your general solution is what you get when you have a plus C in the answer. If I only want the general solution as an answer, you have to solve for Y. The general solution is the family of all answers that satisfies this derivative, this differential equation. It's the family of answers. When I graph this family of answers, we call it a slope field. When I graph the general solution, it's called a slope field. So now we're gonna graph this mofo. Ready, ladies and gentlemen, hold on to your seats. The good thing is, if I wanna do a slope field, I don't need this, okay? I don't need this part if I wanna draw a slope field. This is just so that you understand what a slope field is, okay? <sighs> Guys, we're gonna rock it old school. If you hear the word derivative, what's one word I want you to think of? That's right, slope. If I say slope, what's one word I want you to think of? That's right, derivative, one more time. Derivative is what? Slope, slope is what? Derivative. Keep that in mind as we start doing this. I'm gonna draw a table here. X, Y, and then dy over dx. Okay, you ready? I always try to look for patterns at first when I start these. You're never gonna see the patterns. You may never see them at all right now because we're not in class together and I can't spend like five days in a row doing this. Um, I could, but then that's all we'll do for the rest of the year is slope fields and I just don't know if I'm comfortable doing that. I, I haven't decided yet. I personally don't mind slope fields, but I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, when I taught AP Calc for several years, the AB, my AB kids used to tell the BC kids because the BC kids hated slope fields. And there's just different ways to teach it. I teach it this way, which is like the easiest way because you guys know me, I have my trick show. The BC kids would come running to me and would be like, can you show me how you do it? Because they would fail, they would bomb the test with Miss Rosado and uh, Alfred's, you know, now it's Alfredson, but they would bomb it. Now Alfredson's kids come to me because they find out that I was the AP teacher and I have a lot of different ways of teaching it. I'm telling you this, this method is dummy proof. There are other ways to do it that are so much more um, challenging and, and rigorous. And they're right, it's the right way to do it, but you don't have to make it that difficult. So please try to take a deep breath and just stay with me for a second, okay? Okay, so I try to look for patterns. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna take each individual dot, each individual initial value, each individual point, one, zero, two, zero, three, zero, one, one, two, one, three, one, one, two, three, two, I'm sorry, one, two, 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 three, two. And we're gonna plug them into the differential here. And we're gonna get the answer. And we're gonna put a little line representing what that slope would look like. So one more time, we're gonna take every single point. That's the tedious part plug it into the equation, and then we're gonna graph a little line at that point that represents what the slope of that line would look like. Okay, so let's start with one, zero. Okay, one, zero. So everywhere I see X, I'm gonna plug in a one, and everywhere I see Y, I'm gonna plug in a zero, which means I would have negative one over zero. What's anything divided by zero, ladies and gentlemen? It does not exist. It's the death slope, okay? It does not exist, it's the death slope. There are four different types of slopes, remember? You can have a positive slope, you can have a negative slope, you can have does not exist, the death slope, or you can have a zero slope, okay? that does not exist is the death slope. So at the point one zero, I'm gonna draw a little line that represents a DNE slope. Okay. See how this line has a does not exist slope. It's no slope. Now, if I talked about the point negative one zero, 
negative one zero. And I plugged it in here. What's minus a negative? Positive. But it doesn't change anything because what's anything divided by zero? It's still a zero slope, a does not exist slope. So it doesn't matter if it's positive one zero or negative one zero. Okay, let's look at two zero here. So plug it in, plug it into the differential, negative two divided by zero. Okay, what's anything divided by zero? Does not exist. There's that does not exist slope again. Hey bud, my cat is trying to, uh, trying to swoon me. Do not come up on the table now. Oh, he's up on the table. My giant black cat. Hey bud, this is Ozzy Osbourne. All right, go lay down, buddy. Okay, now again, it doesn't matter if it's positive two zero or negative two zero, because if I took negative two zero and plugged it in, minus a negative makes it a positive two, and anything divided by zero, do you see my giant cat crawling across? Hi, sweetie. I know, I know you want attention, but I can't give you attention right now. Go sit. So anything divided by zero is does not exist. Now I'm gonna have black hair everywhere. Okay, so I hate cats on the table, by the way. So that is another death slope for negative two zero. All right, let's look at three zero. If I take three zero and plug it in, negative three divided by zero does not exist. You cannot divide by zero. So it's a slope of a line that looks like this, the death slope. I always tell kids whenever you do slope, oh, this cat, why are you so annoying? Why? I love you, but you have to get down. See? It doesn't matter what time of day or night, everybody is needy of my attention in this house. <laughs> if you're skiing on a ski slope, you would not want to ski down a slope that looks like this. You would die. You're plummeting to your death. That's why I call it the death slope. All right. It doesn't matter if it's positive three or negative three. So I'll fix it on this end. Because if it's negative three divided by zero, it's still anything divided by zero. It does not exist. So that's what I mean by I try to look at patterns. I start with a point and then I like go across or I go up to see if it's the same instance, depending on the derivative that I'm plugging in. Now again, why am I graphing slopes? Because give me one word for derivative. That's right, it's slope. So that's why at every single point, this is derivative. This is the differential. So when I plug it in, I'm literally graphing a little line at that point, that's the slope of that line because it's derivative, okay? All right, so that's going across. Now let's try the zeros. Zero one, zero two, zero negative one, zero negative two. So let's try zero one. So everywhere I see x, I'm gonna plug in a zero. And everywhere I see y, I'm gonna plug in a one. Well, what's zero divided by anything? That's right, it's zero. So a zero slope, if I'm skiing on a C slope that looks like this, I'm going zero miles per hour. Draw a little line that represents a zero slope. Now, is it gonna change if I have zero negative one? Let's see if that works. So I would have zero divided by negative one is still zero. Good, there's a pattern. So there it is, my zero slope. All right, let's keep going, zero two. Now I'm up here at this point. So zero two, okay, hold on a second, because my cat is driving me nuck and fuss. Lay right there, please. Leave me alone. Cannot get any peace anywhere I go in this house, let me tell you. Okay, zero two, so I'm up here at this point. If every anywhere I see Y, I'm gonna plug in a two now. So zero, two. Zero divided by anything is zero. So again, I'm gonna draw a little line that has a zero slope. Does everybody see what's going on here? Does it matter if it's zero, negative two? No, because zero divided by negative two is still zero. So I'm draw a little line that has a zero slope. Okay, now it's gonna get interesting. So we ready, darlings? I'm gonna start with one, one, right there. One, one. So I'm gonna plug it into this equation. I have a raised CX, I have a one, negative one over one. It's negative one divided by positive one. That's right, it's negative one. So I need to do, to draw a line that has a slope of 
negative one over one. So go to one, one, and act like you're drawing a negative one over positive one slope. So if it was negative one on top, you go down one, positive one means I go right one. Okay, down one, right one. So again, if I'm at this point, you have negative one over one. Negative one means you go down one in the x, in the, sorry, y direction. If it's negative, negative y is down. The one on the bottom is positive, so I go right one in the positive x direction. Down one, right one. So you see how if I drew a slope of a line through here, it's down one, right one. See what I just did? Down one, right one. See how I try to eyeball it, like I'm making a line through down one, right one of all those points? All right, let's try another one. Let's try, <clears throat> we did one, one. Let's try two, one. Okay, everybody see X, I put a two. Everybody see Y, I put a one. So now go to two, one, and I'm gonna go down two, right one. So you ready? I'm here. Down two, right one. And then when I do that, I kinda, it's a little more of a steeper slope because it's negative two, but it's still a negative slope. Down two, right one. And I go up here and I draw a little line, but I actually start drawing it over that point. Let's try another one. Three, one. You ready? That's negative three over one. So go here and I'm gonna go down three, right one. So I imaginary line, imaginary line, imaginary line. It's a little steeper. Down three, one, two, three, right one. And I act like I'm drawing a line through that point, but only do it over the coordinate. All right, let's try my one, two. That's negative one over two. So you ready? I go here. <clears throat> All right. And I'm going to go down one, right two. One more time. I go to one, two, the coordinate one, two. But I'm going to make a slope of down one, right two. Down one, right two. So from here, I want to connect to that dot. We see how I'm eyeballing that? Like I'm connecting it through there for down one, right two. Okay, let's try another one. Two, two. Negative two over two, which is just negative one. Do you guys agree? Which is, if I make that into a fraction so I can draw a slope, it's negative one over one. One more time, the point two, two, right there is negative two over two. You could leave it that way if you want to. You can go down to right two, okay? Or you can reduce it to negative one and then just make it into a fraction by putting it over one. So down one, right one. We're back to a negative one slope, okay? Or down two, right two. Do we see how it'd be the same? Okay. All right, how about three, two? So it would be negative three over two. You ready? Here's my three, two. I'm gonna go down three, right two. Okay, and then I'm gonna draw my line. There it is, I got one quadrant of the slope field done. All right, I'm gonna try and do a few more here. So I'm gonna continue it down here. Uh, let's do one, negative one. One, negative one. Which would be negative one over one. Okay? Which is just positive one over one. Does everybody see that? Take one, plug it in, becomes negative one. Over the y is negative one. Negative divided by negative is a positive. So now here I am at one, negative one. I want to draw the slope of that line. 
So we go up one, right one. And it's like I draw a little line connecting to there. Does everybody see that? Okay. I'm gonna continue this down here, X, Y, And we're gonna do dy over dx. So let's do two negative one. So now if I plug that into negative x over y, it's negative two over negative one, which is just positive. So you ready? Go to two negative one, and I'm gonna go up to right one. Everybody see what I just did there? Now I'm going to go 3, negative 1. Negative 3 over negative 1, which is just 3 over 1. So you ready? Here I am at 3, negative 1. I'm going to go up 3, right 1. So it's a little steeper now. And there it is. How are we doing, darlings? Are we kind of hanging in there? Because I feel like we should wrap it up. All right, I'm going to finish the next three. So one negative two is negative one over negative two, which is a positive a half. I go here, I go up one, right two. And then it's like I'm drawing an imaginary line to connect there. Okay, two negative two <clears throat> is negative two over negative two, which is one over one. So I go here and I go up one, right one. I just do that right? Negative two over negative two is just one. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then three negative two. Negative three over negative two is just three halves. So you ready? Up three, right two. And then you draw down to connect there. Okay, so you can kind of see the circle starting. You see the one circle here? Okay, and then you have a semicircle. You see the semicircles? So obviously on this side, it should look like the other side of the circles. Okay, my darlings? So I'm gonna stop here because we're like at 42 minutes and I do not want this to be an hour long. Your homework. For video lesson 19, I'm gonna give you one and a half problems. I want you to finish the do now slope field. And in this worksheet, in this notes packet, I want you to try number one, x plus one. Okay. I want you to try example one. Now, if you look at example one, do not worry about finding the particulars, the uh, general solution, why don't you just try and work on the slope field? So you're literally going to put a little table on the side here. And then your dy over dx is just x plus one. So if I start with zero, one. You ready, everybody see x, I put a zero. With zero plus one, it's just one. So I'm literally gonna go to zero, one, sorry. Zero, one, and I'm gonna draw the slope of a line that has a positive one. So up one over one. So it looks like that. So everybody see what I'm doing here? Okay, if you try like one, 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 zero, sorry. Everybody see X, I'm plotting one. One plus one is two. So one, zero, I'm gonna go up two over one. Okay, I want you to try that. Notice there's no Y to plug in over here. So the Y's kind of don't matter. <laughs> you can even like ignore the Y's because there's nothing to plug in for Y over here. Okay, this one has Y to plug in. This one has Y to plug in, you see what I'm saying? But I have no Y's to plug in. So I'm really only plugging in my X's. Okay, so I want you to try and finish this one and then 
work on example one, and we will go over these in lesson 20. All right, my darlings, have a good one. Take care, brush your goddamn hair.